What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and holy moly we have a lot to discuss tonight regarding even more DLC that was found for Cold Warrior 2 as well as some other surprise updates. Definitely stay tuned but before we jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like and make sure the notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Cold Warrior 2, Warzone, Modern Warfare 2 and any other future Call of Duty as well. Now a lot of us out there were not aware there was a private investors call that happened for Activision earlier this morning and it was their quarter one earnings reports. They haven't been able to publicize their investors call like they usually do because of the Microsoft acquisition so that's why I didn't end up streaming that phone call here on the channel and I'm sure after the acquisition goes through or doesn't they'll be able to do those live phone calls again like we usually streamed over the last couple of years but they of course reconfirm what we already knew Call of Duty was at a decline this year Vanguard's down bad Warzone player base wasn't as high their sales weren't great and they were of course hyping up the upcoming sequel to Modern Warfare 2019 the most successful Call of Duty to date and we'll talk more about that in separate videos of course and on the podcast later this week also enjoy the awesome Raygun Mastercraft C5A gameplay here in the background. Dropped a nice nuke here on the map Raid. Haven't played Raid too much over the last couple of weeks or months, but definitely a nice match here for you guys in the background. Enjoy that. Now, we also got confirmation from Charlie Intel as they reported the support for variable refresh rate is coming to PS5, which Sony just announced, and it will come to Call of Duty Vanguard and the GO Black Ops Cold War. So, I do have a new PC coming in soon. I'm not sure if I'm going to rebuy Cold War, but I'll definitely be moving to PC full-time for future Call of Duty releases. However, I mean, PS5 already runs great with Cold War, so let me know if you guys are me considering this variable refresh rate option down below in the comments. I might give it a shot. I think you have to have a certain monitor to support that, though, so let me know if you guys are interested in that feature. But also, thank you for all the support on my gameplay stream earlier this afternoon. Going ahead and grinding the new Super Easter Egg reward in Cold War Zombies. For those out there asking, is there anything more to the Super Easter Egg? I would say never say never, right? It's certainly plausible, and... The thing is, I already gave my thoughts on the quest on stream, and I'll do it again on the podcast or even in an upcoming Zombies video, but I'm happy we at least got something after doing all six main quests. A watch, 12 emblems, a purple rarity weapon every time you spawn in with your loadouts, and even some story updates that we'll talk more about in a separate video most definitely, but there may in fact be more than meets the eye with the super easter egg, and I'm not going to go too much in depth with it, but you probably have seen some tweets already circulating around the internet regarding it, but if you're like, what about Wonder Weapon support in Onslaught? or the Cerberus and Crystalax and Outbreak. How about the 11 unreleased Onslaught maps? Like I reiterated many times in the past, year two is not over yet. There's still plenty of time left in 2022 for them to add all of that in. And today was just really the start for Zombies updates we're getting throughout this year. So be excited for that. And don't set expectations too high, but it's okay to speculate for fun about content that seems like it's ready to go, has been leaked already, or may just reuse some assets and could be an easy fix for Treyarch to put together in an upcoming patch. So keep that in mind. But now when it comes to the spicy material now of course as expected with the patch that we installed today for year two a lot more dlc was found that was posted early on twitter by the usual suspects so first and foremost the smg that we know is coming codenamed the flechette has a name now and it's currently codenamed the ugr can also be found in custom game restrictions for those out there that haven't seen it yet the site has been there for a while considering ravenoff was probably supposed to release by now but hasn't the smg is now popping up in that menu but to unlock it for free in multiplayer you have to kill an enemy revealed by your spy plane, UAV, or field mic in 15 different completed matches. For zombies now, eliminate 1,000 enemies while using an epic quality or better SMG. Definitely easier to do now considering the super easter egg reward, so that was probably done on purpose of course for the weapon. Early gameplay was also posted by you know who, and it features green tracers on the blueprint itself, which we're going to talk about why in a minute. I have to be very careful with I have to be very careful with what I show on screen for obvious reasons, so excuse if there's like a sensor or a blur on some of the things that I'm talking about, but funny enough, the description for the underwater rifle is, and I quote, the APS stands for Optomat Podvnoi Spes, I cannot pronounce that, I'm not Russian, excuse me, if you guys are, then feel free to correct me in the comments, help me pronounce it, but it translates to Special Underwater Assault Rifle in English, it's an underwater firearm designed by the Soviet Union in the early 1970s, and was adopted in 1975, made by by the Tula Arms plant, also clearly visible in the Call of Duty Ghost underwater campaign mission, which I think everybody remembers at least, right? That was the weapon that you used throughout the mission, and that weapon has been in Ghost weapon mod packs throughout the years. If you play custom zombies on PC, you're probably familiar with it, but yeah, with that being said, the weapon is confirmed by Treyarch in the recent blog post to be releasing before the Scythe melee weapon, that is the range weapon they're referencing, so it could drop any day now. It could drop later this week, could drop maybe after season three, a good week or two, 
to. It can happen any time, as I always say, but what's weird about this is that it's a Soviet SMG, similar to the Vargo being a Soviet AR, yet Ravanov apparently got completely removed from the game. For those out there who may have hacked the bundle onto their accounts or were gifting it, whatever the case was, if you look at that bundle now, apparently Ravanov is no longer a part of the bundle, but the other content is still usable. So that's very weird that apparently the entire Ravanov bundle is scrapped because of the conflict going on with Russia and Ukraine. So I get it if they don't want to sell Ravanov as an operator skin, maybe give him out for free at some point, or they've just gotten rid of him entirely. It's totally unknown, but they might have to repurpose that bundle since it has a scythe melee weapon in it. And whenever the scythe comes out for free with the unlock challenges, that bundle should coincidentally release alongside it, just like we saw with every other DLC weapon in Cold War's life cycle. So knowing that, I mean, if he's removed from the files entirely, he might not ever come out. And that's weird. I mean, they could have gave him out for free today for doing a super Easter egg. I mean, why not, right? I mean, he's a Russian operator in a game about the Cold War. I don't see really a major problem with that, at least not in my opinion. But the thing is, he may be a Russian operator and may love Russia in the game, but he's also a defector to some extent. He still helped out NATO and the good guys. So I don't really see a problem dropping him in any capacity, but maybe you can disagree with me down below in the comments. Try not to get too political, but it's just unfortunate to hear about that. He may never come out. Now, what's even crazier is that officially on the operator selection menu, you can see Lazar on the NATO section. So it's confirmed the returning face from the campaign is going to be Lazar, even though he died. I'm not really sure if that matters though. I guess for gameplay purposes, they're like, hey, might as well throw out a bundle for him, see how it sells. The canon doesn't really matter in regards to what skins they sell in the game. I mean, even if Raptor 1 died at the end of Operation Excision, I still would have said, hey, drop a Raptor 1 bundle at some point. And they still could do that as well. But you could see the in-game preview from his operator bio, as I'll put on screen so you can see. And what's crazy about the bundle tied to his character is that it actually features a blueprint for the UMG SMG. So that's where the gameplay originates from. People out there already force loaded these bundles on their accounts as expected. And you could, of course, get green tracer fire on the blueprints there. We have one for the new SMG, an AR. We have a finisher, accessory, a charm calling card emblem, reticle, and even a really cool gesture. And they chose an interesting skin for his look. I'm surprised they didn't go with that Burger Town look from the Colder campaign and even some of the marketing they did for the game. Elzar is a cool character. I mean, they probably couldn't sell any of the Russian bad guys, if you know what I mean, because of the obvious conflict going on, considering they potentially got rid of Ravanov, so they're going to be going with good guys or other characters entirely if they're going to be selling some new characters throughout year two. Now, this could even be the first bundle that comes out here with season three, considering you could already see his operator at the menu, considering it has the new SMG. This could drop any day now, and I'll be sure to cover it as soon as I can. Now, in terms of other bundles, we then have the Poison Sky Tracer Pack, and it is a Mastercraft for the Swiss Sniper Rifle. This one leaked out quite some time ago. I want to say a good three-ish months ago, and it finally has a bundle for 2,000 COD points. As you can see, a really sick looking Sniper Mastercraft with a mind-blowing inspect animation as well. The snake actually bites you, you hallucinate a little bit. People out there already posted a preview of the inspect on Twitter, as you guys may have seen. We also have another blueprint in there for, I believe that's an SMG. We then have an Adler skin looking like a pilot. Might as well drop Raptor 1 at some point too. I mean, close enough, right? We then have an accessory, a charm, a calling card, and even an emblem. I'm not much of a sniper in Cold War, but I know how good the snipers are. Might have to give one a go and really get a serious nuke while using one. I think it's totally plausible, even for somebody out there that doesn't really use snipers too often. So I'll be sure to use that at some point soon. But wow, I mean, that is a sexy looking Mastercraft. It might just be the best looking blueprint for a sniper that we've ever gotten, at least in Cold War. Now, I don't mean to break continuity here with the bundle previews, but considering the snake theme around this Swiss Mastercraft for the sniper, I'm like, maybe this is tied to the eventual release of Jungle, since it does look like they're emphasizing snakes quite a bit on the remaster of Jungle. We already saw a glimpse of one from some leaked footage that popped up on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, and we do have new claims that apparently Jungle is now no longer a work in progress, but is complete with the latest patch. Some people are claiming they've played it, some are claiming they can't get into it. Not sure what the deal is there, but those that have apparently played the new version of Jungle are saying that more snakes were added around the map, it looks finished, and could end up releasing at some point relatively soon. If you look at WMD from Season 2 of Vanguard and Warzone, that came out around the middle of the 
season over in Cold War. So the same deal might happen with Jungle, where around the middle of Season 3, we'll end up getting the new map added to Cold War, but hopefully much sooner than that. But obviously, you have to be careful with what footage is shown in videos over on live streams. So be aware of why I put sensors and a lot of blurs and some of the things that I'm talking about. Now, we then have a new bundle for the character of Fuse, a character that got introduced at the end of Season 6. He was the character planting bombs for Stitch over in Verdansk. He currently has one bundle in game, which already was cool, but he's now getting a Scrap Heap Tracer Pack with a Scrap Junkie Operator skin. We then have blue and red Tracer Fire on the new blueprints, one for the MAC-10, one for an LMG there, can't see which one that is. We then have a Charm Calling Card accessory, a vehicle skin, and even a vehicle horn. So I love the fact they're bringing out some extra bundles for characters that didn't get much spotlight throughout Cold War's core life cycle, or characters that were around for a while, but never got too many good bundles with solid blueprints and tracers and worthwhile cosmetics. Happy they're doing that for a character such as Fuse, and why not, right? I think he was a cool character in the cutscene and actually spoke some words. No shade to Vanguard, of course, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Now, then I have a new bundle coming for Kitsune, and it's called Yokai. Hopefully, I didn't pronounce that wrong. If I did, apologies. Correct me down below in the comments. Cool looking operator skin, the Yokai Master, and the blueprints do come with gold and red tracer fire for an AR, a sniper, and even a pistol there. We then have a Kitsune mask for the charm. I thought that was already in game though, I guess I'm wrong. We then have a finishing move, a calling card, and even an emblem. And with this skin, I'm like, okay, heavy raided vibes from Mortal Kombat. Not trying to say, oh, because he's Asian, that's what I'm talking about. No, the hat. That's what I'm comparing there. But definitely a cool looking pack, and I'm surprised it has tracers to be honest with you. We only had one bundle thus far in year two, the Valhalla pack which was pretty plain, had a cool operator skin for Wraith, but the blueprints weren't the greatest and didn't have any tracers or reactive elements of any sort. Now we also have an answer to a question that a lot of us had a good couple of months ago when upon trying out the Vargo Mastercraft in Warzone, a different blueprint would pop up and turns out it was part of an unreleased bundle that we're now getting a glimpse of for 1200 COD points, the classic Noir pack with the Neo Noir Vargo blueprint there, no tracers, so it's probably one of the more plain bundles of year two alongside of Valhalla. This also comes with some other film-related cosmetics, like the projector, a Scarlet Noir calling card, an old cinema emblem, and of course, the Shaded Rose sticker. And it's the same blueprint that I actually had in my hands by mistake over in Warzone a couple of months ago. I tried loading in my Vargo Mastercraft, the Pharaoh Fury, and this is what was in my hands. So this has been done for quite some time, and it's finally gonna come out at some point very soon. Now here's a bundle you guys have probably been waiting for. We have the Tracer Pack Dead City with Samantha's infamous look from the D-Machina intro cinematic cutscene. So yes, we have her classic Berlin camouflage outfit. We then have blueprints featuring orange tracer fire, fire dismemberment, and fire elemental damage in zombies mode. We have blueprints there for what is that, the LC-10, the AUG, even a nail gun, which is surprising. We have the boom surprise finishing move. We then have the phone booth charm, which is great. It's super poetic for this upcoming pack. And considering you also saw it in the Machina intro, we have a calling card emblem, vehicle skin, and even a vehicle horn for hardcore zombies fanatics out there. This one's gonna sell like hotcakes, and that's why I was thinking, hey, they could give out her skin as a bonus for doing all the Easter eggs, but I think Activision knows damn well this pack would sell pretty damn good, so they're gonna go ahead and sell it for 2,400 COD points. Now, last, but most definitely not least, we have the Pharaoh of Death Ultra skin for Salah. Definitely a very fitting skin for his character, and this also comes with not only an Ultra Operator skin, yes, it's animated, but Orange Tracer Fire, Fire Dismemberment, and Fire Elemental Damage damage on the blueprints there, as you can see on screen. And while this is a stacked bundle, you can even scroll down to see more content in it. Can't remember seeing any other bundle that had that scroller option, apart from like the new stockpile bundle coming out with the RGB skin for Striker, or some of those really giant bundles featuring, what was it, all the clown and paintball type of outfits. But this one has quite a bit, and it's gonna have blueprints for the FFAR, I think that's a Pellington, even the Amp 63. I believe an Amp also came with his original Salah Operator pack from a couple of months ago. We then have the crispy finishing move, an accessory, charm, emblem, sticker, and even a reticle. A nice Egyptian theme bundle to perfectly fit Salah's character. And he was, of course, in the cutscene featuring Collateral from, I believe it was season four. Now, with that, I mean, if you're a fan of Moon Knight, hey, I mean, Egypt is in the news as of lately quite a bit. So you might be hyped to see this upcoming animated Ultra Operator skin. And I'm honestly excited to see an Ultra Operator skin during year two. Wasn't expecting this much effort into the bundles for its second year of support, but already it's gotten more updates. Cold War, that that is, than Mono over 2019 got during its second year of life with a soap pack, couple of maps and weapons. Really happy to see year two nonetheless for any successful Call of Duty. But if you're wondering when this content comes out, I'm assuming over
over the next couple days, somebody spicy on Twitter will end up posting the official bundle schedule for this year two content on top of the bundle schedule for the upcoming Vanguard packs. And apart from that, other content was found such as cosmetics and operator skins that are not included at all in the bundles we just talked about. So without a doubt, as I said, year two isn't over yet. Another patch will release at some point in the future, which will probably give us more insight on even more content that should be releasing at around summertime, right? But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on today's major update for Cold War Year 2? Are you excited for Jungle, the new bundles, and also what are you thinking about the Zombie Super Easter, which I'll be talking more about in a Zombies Focus video and the podcast. Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.